We'll stay with I-Team 8 tonight and the disturbing murder of a kindergarten teacher. She had also become a mother recently when police say she had been killed by her husband. I-Team 8's Kat Sandoval is talking with her parents, sharing their heartbreak and what their message is tonight. Just a few steps from where I'm standing is where they found 26-year-old Amber Morgan's body. She was brutally murdered, and we got a chance to speak to her parents. This was a woman that they don't make them like that. Corey Morgan described his daughter as a bright star who loved being a mother. That Friday night, she went to Costco with her mother. And she took everything up two flights of stairs having a five-week-old baby. That was the last time the parents saw her. Corey requested we call his daughter by her maiden name, Morgan. Her husband, Robert Cooley, confessed to the murder, telling officers, I did something bad, I need to go to jail, and then later, I took my wife's life. Police found Amber Saturday morning in her home. Police say her face was beaten so severely she was unrecognizable. She was shot in the head and her throat slit. Officers saw blood on Cooley's hands and clothing. Amber's parents say there were red flags with Cooley, but didn't think it would go this far. He was verbally abusing her and um, what I would call spiraling, starting to spiral out of control since um, a little shortly before the birth of the baby. He threatened me. He tried to uh, engage in a physical altercation with me. Amber's mom tells us Amber asked for a petition for dissolution of marriage papers the night before she was killed. We think that he tried to confront her and she told him something he didn't want to hear. Amber was a kindergarten teacher at Victory Prep. She taught there for a year. She just cared for others deeply. She just had a history of connecting with, with anyone. Her husband faces a preliminary murder charge and is in Marion County Jail without bond. The parents tell me they will be adopting Amber's five-week-old baby named Audrey. I'm IT Mates Kat Sandoval, Wish TV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. All right, Shalom. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai, by Shem Kakwadash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching these truth that's going on around the earth. Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is your brother, Atazawan, from GMS St. Louis Camp, okay? And uh, we're going to get into a quick quick lesson, okay, uh, concerning a news clip that we saw with this young woman who was killed by her husband, okay? And uh, oftentimes, you know, uh, those of us who preach these truth of the gospel, the Holy Bible, right, the first thing we do is we talk to our family members, our close friends, and try to break the scripture down to them so that they can get some kind of understanding. Now, most in most cases, our family, our friends, they reject it, all right? But <clears throat> nonetheless, we continue on in the truth, and we understand that some will get it, and the, and the rest is just blinded, okay? All right? And that... How about Shem Yahushai is in control of all things from life to death and everything in between, okay? And so we have a story here of a young woman who was killed by her husband, all right? Uh, she was a kindergarten teacher, and uh, she had just had a child. They had just had a child, okay? And, 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 and he beat up beyond recognition, according to the report that we, that we saw shot her and then slit her throat okay and that right there is vengeance okay that's just not a a normal way that people are taken out if you will all right so we're going to get a few scriptures and, and we'll close out all right as always we we bring these types of things out all right so that those who do watch that you can not only watch but learn Okay, and that's what these, you know, YouTube videos are about, is to teach you, you know, um, that now you're, in, you're living in a time where really there is no such thing as safety other than being protected and having a hedge, you know, round about you um, from your how by shimmy how shy, okay, especially if you have a man, <clears throat> a righteous man in your life. You know, be it, be it a wife or be it children, you have a righteous father, 
all right, who, who still prays for you, even though you, you can't get it and understand it right now. Maybe the, maybe the Lord will protect, protect you anyway, okay, until such a time as he does wake you up before it's too late, right? But again, all things are in the hands of your Yahweh Shem Yahushai. So let's go over real quick to Ecclesiasticus. I have it pulled up right here in front of me, which is in the Apocrypha, also known as Sirach, chapter 39. And <clears throat> we'll look at, uh, we'll start right here at um, verse 25. And it reads, For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron and salt, flour, wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape and oil and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. All right. So a lot of the things that the Lord put here on earth, and we're, we're speaking specifically, specifically to Jake. You know, you know how to take the good things of the Lord and turn them into wickedness, right? Going on, it says in verse 28, there be spirits that are created for vengeance. And it appears that this man was a spirit created for vengeance against this young woman. No matter how young, how pretty, you know, no matter how much her parents doted on her and she was a good person. I mean, it's, it's almost the same story that you hear every time somebody's taken out in a vicious manner. You, you have their family members tell you how great of a person they were. Well, obviously, the Heavenly Father had something against her, okay? Um, and we're not insensitive to, to the loss of, of people, right? But it is to show you how the Heavenly Father works because we've been fed so many lies growing up in a so-called Christian church, in the black church, and so on and so forth, right? That the Lord only does good in your eyes, right? So you, you have to come to the understanding that the Lord controls everything. And he says that, he says that in the word, right? In the scriptures, okay? Going on, let's start again at verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes, right? You know, they're here to bring about punishment, all right? The spirit jumped on that man to do what he did, you know, if you want to say it that way, okay? But those spirits are created for vengeance against certain souls, all right? Going on, it says, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him what that made them. So who made these spirits in the earth? Yahweh Yahushai, the Lord, all right? Made these spirits to come out and do the things that he wants them to do, and the spirits don't refuse to do it, right? They can't, you see? So every time we see something like this, you know, um, if, if, you're, if you're awake, right, knowing the truth that is, then you know that it is the work of the Lord. All right, we're going a little bit further here. In verse 29, it reads, Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. For whose vengeance? Yahweh Yahushua, especially we're talking about you Israelites out there, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, all right? These spirits were created. All right, to, to, to get that vengeance, all right, for you, how about Shimmy Shai? Going on to verse 30, it says, Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpent, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. Okay, so it's not a matter of whether you think a person is a good person, um, you know, so sweet, so kind, and so on and so forth. We have no idea what this person or this spirit or soul has done in their prior lives that the Heavenly Father has against them, okay? And this is why it's important for you to repent. You know, we repent on a daily basis because we don't know what we did in the past that offended the Lord. We do have an idea because we have the scriptures, okay? But you knowingly in this life don't remember what you did, okay? 
Verse 31, they shall rejoice in his commandment. Who's the day? The spirits that were created for vengeance. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when that time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Right. So they, whatever the heavenly father created these spirits to do, that's what they're going to do. And they will not. Okay. They will not disobey the Lord no matter how many times you heard your pastor say Satan was kicked out of heaven and he took a third of the angels and they came into the earth they all rebelled against the Lord there's no such thing all right and we have to understand how to how the Lord operates now we're going to go over the numbers and here you'll see it says Moses pleased for the people okay and this is where you get the understanding of how you know, spirits have come back into the earth, okay, right, which is a little bit of a heavier topic, all right, for, for others to, to understand, right, in what's known as reincarnation, all right, so this is Numbers 4, uh, it's like 14 and 11, and the reason the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me, and how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Yahweh, then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. See, the Lord was mad. He was upset, you know, with the way that he had delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. With all the power and everything that he did for them, these niggas were still complaining. They was murmuring. They was coming up against Moses and Aaron. You know, they were doing such wickedness. And the Lord was like, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm going to kill them. Okay? Going on uh, to uh, verse 14, and it reads, And they will tell it to the inhabitants. So the, Moses is trying to, well, he's talking to the Lord to say, Please don't do this because we don't want the other nation people to see that, you know, you, you basically abandoned us, brought us out with all this, you know, might and strength in your arm. And then you, you left us. We don't want the other nations to know that, that, that this is what happened. OK, so so Moses is pleading with the Lord and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. But they have heard that thou, Yahweh, art among this people, that thou, Yahweh, art seen face to face. And that they could, it's like, and thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in the pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord Yahweh was not able to bring his people into the land which he swear unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Right. So they'll think that, you know, the Lord uh, just abandoned these people. OK. And, and, you know, he's you know, the Lord is known by all these other nations as, a, as that terrible God, you know. You know, if you will, Allah Shadrach, right, having that demon like power. OK, so these other nations were aware of the power of God. All right. Or Yahweh for the children of Israel. Now, going on, verse 17, it reads, And now I beseech thee, let the power of thy Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord Yahweh is long-suffering and of great mercy. See, because Moses is putting the Lord in remembrance of his words. All right? The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity, or Salakia, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people of, <coughs> according unto the greatness of thy, of thy mercy and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Right, so the Lord said, please don't bring the iniquities of the forefathers on these people, save these people. You know, so Moses was, but it, you know, in verse 18 is just showing you that the Lord has the power, okay, to put those iniquities back on those, you come back in the third and fourth generation, you know, and he can put those, he can put those sins on you, make you pay for it and judge you for it. Okay. That's the point. And so that leads into the point 
or, or the topic of reincarnation, which most black um, church people can't understand. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to get back on track here. I just wanted to put that in there so that, you know, those who may watch this lesson, you understand that the heavenly father can put those iniquities on those next generations or those souls can come, those souls come back into the flesh. You know, you die, you be judged, and then the Lord puts you back in the earth, right, and judge you for what you did prior, all right? So now you have to understand that when we're talking about, uh, particularly since this is an issue of a, of a young woman, you know, that a woman, okay, is, is bound to her husband, and her husband is head over her, whether there are people who tell you it's true or not, like, in the world today, Right, because you if you go to a wedding now, the one word you won't hear in their vows is obey. Okay, but that's what a woman is supposed to do. That's the way the heavenly Father set it up. Okay, so now let's get to something right here. All right, this is Matthew five and thirty one, and it reads: It had been said, "Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce." Right, which also came through Moses. Verse 32, but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication or for the fact of what? Fornication or 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 going out there and what as people in the world today call it cheating, right? A woman, if she cheats on her husband, is, is what Yahweh Shai is saying. Okay. Cause her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorce committed to adultery. So <clears throat> a man can't divorce his wife, let's just say, especially if he took her as a virgin or what have you, all right? And she's a terrible cook. That's not a reason to do that. That's not a reason to get rid of her, right? Or she don't, she can't sew or, 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 or she went blind in one eye, okay? That's not a reason, but there is a just reason. And that is if your wife goes out there and commits adultery against you. That's a reason to divorce her. Anything outside of that, there's, not a, there's no real legitimate reason to do it. Now, I bring this up because in the piece, in the news piece, it says that what? She served him or gave him a notice, I believe, of what? Wanting to disannul the marriage. You see? And a woman is not authorized to divorce her husband. Okay? As you see it here, it says... In verse 31 again, it hath been said, whosoever, and the whosoever will be Israelites, right? Particularly in this case, the men, whosoever, whosoever shall put away his wife. So a man can do it for the cause, as Yahweh Shai said, of fornication. But a woman can't put away her husband. That's not how that works. But in this wicked society, that's what they teach you women, is that you can go to get yourself a lawyer, right, and, and file for divorce from your husband, okay, which is, which is out of pocket. That's totally wrong, but that's what this society teaches, okay? So is that the reason why this man, you know, spirit jumped on him and he did what he did, okay? Because a woman has an order, you know, being married to a man, you're supposed to be with that one man the rest of your life, okay? <clears throat> and you just can't. And see, in this society, they teach women they can do whatever they want. You know, as women will say, you don't own me. I can do what I want. If I don't want to be with you no more and I, I see somebody else that catches my eye and, 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 and this person is flirting with me on the job and I like it, this, that, and another, then I can, I can just go get me a divorce from you. No, that's not how that's supposed to work. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 7. It says, For a man in, indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of the Most High, but the woman is the glory of the man. Right? There's an order. Okay? The man is above the woman. Right? So you have the Most High, Yahweh Shimei Shai, above the man. Going on to verse 8, it says, For the man is not of the woman. But the woman of the man, right? You, you, you third in line, woman. Okay, you don't jump over your husband, and you don't jump over the Most High. But this society teaches that. 
all right? You can do what you want. You know, my body, my choice, all these other different things. Verse 9, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. You see, now that begs me to go into, uh, I want to say it's, Let's go to let's go to seven. Romans seven. And let me see. Yeah. Romans seven and one and it and it reads, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband, right? In order for you to be free and to be with somebody else, woman, your husband has to die, okay? That's the only way. And see, this is the harsh reality and the truth of the scriptures. And there and, and they're those who buck up against it. They don't like it, right? But this is the way the Lord set it up, okay? And so as a woman... As a wife, you know, you're supposed to uh, be there to help and serve your husband in whatever capacity he may need you. All right. And so here we'll read the description of a worthy woman. And just listen for any sisters out there that if you've never heard this scripture before or read this scripture or even knew the scripture was in the Bible, take a listen to this. Okay. All right. So that, you know, you can, you can through the spirit, you know, can can uh, 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 get rid of these Western ideas, okay, where women are allowed to come up against their men. This is Proverbs 31 and 10, and it reads, who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. All right, so uh, when a man knows that he has a woman that's there for him, he can put some trust into her, okay? All right, that she, she's there to be there to comfort him and to help him, all right? Verse 12, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life, you see? All right, all the days of her life. She's not going to do any evil. And today, just women, just women, especially here in Babylon, are great. You're just evil, right? Verse 13, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands on a spindle, and her hands hold a uh, distaff. She stretched out her hand to the poor, yea. She reaches forth her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And this is just giving you a description of the things that a woman would do right, for her husband and for her family. And in that, when she, does, when she does the right thing, when she does good and not evil, she's also serving the Lord. Okay? So there's no, there's no limit to what she will do for her husband. All right, and her family and her household. You women today in the Western world, what are you? You're career minded. So you'll go to work and you'll work for some CEO, some CFO, right? Because why? You're trying to climb the corporate ladder. And so you walk away basically mentally and spiritually from your husband and your household to go chase a so called career that's going to, it's not going to get you anything anyway. You're, you should be looking at it, right, as, as, as uh, your, your husband and your family is more important than any brass ring they can stick in front of you and tell you you ought to reach for it, okay? And the whole thing is all designed to destroy the, the family unit anyway, 
okay? Going on, it says, a husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. And I'll stop right there. I'm not going to read the rest of it. You know, you can go into it and read it, but this is a good uh, scripture for especially young women to read, okay? So that you can get an understanding of what's more important. This is uh, Titus 2 and 3, and it reads, The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teaches a good thing, right? This is also going into what women should be doing or characteristics of a good woman, especially when she's aged, okay? That you teach uh, younger women, that you teach the children, and so on and so forth. You can't teach a man, but you can teach younger women how to be good, how to be good wives. Okay, verse four, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Right, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. Right, not somebody that's going to run after a career. You 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 leave you leave your husband, you leave your marriage, you leave your house to go across country to go chase a fucking career. Right? That's not what you're supposed to do. Okay. Again, this is all to give some credence and understanding to the position of a woman. Okay. What role you play in your husband's life. All right. To be obedient, chase, keepers at home, good. What, is it, what does it say? Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of Yahweh be not blasphemed. Right? Because the Lord has set up an order, right? And you women fall under your husband. You see? And it's a tragic story, as we always get into, but nonetheless, you have to understand, right, that the Lord has spirits that he created for vengeance, all right, to come against all those who do wickedly, all right, no matter how tragic and graphic it may may be when you hear these stories. But you have to understand, all right, what's taking place in the earth now. Because we're close to the end of this thing. And, and as we get closer day by day, hour by hour, we're going to hear about and see uh, on the news and on different news feeds and social media platforms and so on, all right, because the world is extremely small now, okay, because you can, you can travel from one side of the earth to the other side in in in, a, in, a, in less than a day, right? Everything that happens in the earth is put out there through satellite and in an instant, we see it, right? So the world or the earth has become small, right? Through all these different technologies that the Lord allowed these, these people to have, okay? Because these times are, are speeding up, right? And so we see these things and we report on them because time is short and you need to get the understanding as best you can. All right, this is Zephaniah 3 and 5 and it reads, the just Lord, right? Honorable, majesty, right, correct, exact, okay? The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning do he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. You see, so the Lord is responsible for bringing judgments, all right, every single day. Okay. And sure, it's a hurtful thing, you know, but when you understand the scriptures, you know, it all makes sense to you. Like most people, they get emotional about things and they don't understand how, how something like this can happen. Well, all you have to do is search the scriptures and you'll find out how and why and particularly the time in which you live in now, okay? You, you'll understand what's going on. So you have to pray uh, and repent and pray for, for the Lord's mercy as we, as we read about when, in, in that scripture in Numbers, you know, that the Lord is known for long suffering and for his, his great mercy you know and that's what that's what you need to be asking for okay to protect yourself and and and, and protect your family if at all possible 
All right, so I'm, that's going to do it for the lesson. We're, we're ending right there, all right? Um, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. All right, that's Ecclesiastes 39 and 28. All right, take the heed, all right? Hearken unto the words of the Lord, all right, before it's too late. All right, so with that, I'll end the lesson right there. All praise, honor, and glory goes to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekhar All right, double honor to the apostles and elders. Great millstone. Shalom to the hope of the elect. See you all again real soon on another lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.